in uh, 29 minutes or less, try to explain the uh, evolution of, um, of American Jewish identities over several generations. And to, to understand, in uh, 29 minutes or less, try to explain the uh, evolution of, um, of American Jewish identities over several generations. And to to understand how how Jews have been changing since my grandparents' generation, to my parents' generation, to my generation, to my children's generation, and maybe my grandparents' generation, we have to remember just two things: emancipation and enlightenment. And any any of you who ever went to um, a to took any modern Jewish history classes. Remember that the, the, the title of the class was Emancipation and the Enlightenment. And that was, that, that was the, the beginning of the Jewish encounter with, um, with modernity. Uh, American Jews are still undergoing, remarkably, an encounter with modernity that continues to move along the twin paths of emancipation and enlightenment. So, what main emancipation and what main enlightenment? This is a uh, any, are there any, any, any Swarty Jews here who don't care what I said? Um, <laughs> uh, by emancipation, I'm referring to the entry of Jews into large society. At this point, with the entry of large society into the, the Jewish people. Um, uh, so, two things happen. I think this is like a basic sociology. If you want to describe people, you have to, you have to know two things about them. Who, who do they hang out with? You know, their, their structural relationship is what we, we say, and their culture, their values, their ideas, you know, what they, what they feel. So the emancipation looks at, it refers to the entry of Jews to our society, and I would say in turn, the entry of our society into the Jews, and that's a matter of who are Jews associates and friends and neighbors and all that, and marriage partners, obviously, and the Enlightenment is about the changing values of, uh, of, of Jews, and there, the key issue is the rise uh, of individualism. The movement from community to individualism to increasing empowerment. So let, we'll, we'll think along these two lines. Who are Jews hanging out with and, um, and, uh, um, and, and what the values are? First, let's, 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 do, the, let's do the first part. The question of, um, of, uh, of structure. Um, if you if you look at, if you count in any way, Jews associates, who are their who are their marriage partners, who are their friends, who are their neighbors, with whom do they work? You look at look at all, look at all those things, and if you count, you can trust me, I count. This is what I do. Um, one of the most, most remarkable changes in American in American Jewry in my lifetime. I was born in 1950 in uh, in Brooklyn. I know you, you probably would have guessed that, but sure. Um, um, and one of the most remarkable changes is is the extent to which Jewish social circles have been interpenetrated by uh, non-Jews. Uh, it changes who the Jews are, it changes how they think about non-Jews, changes how non-Jews think about them. For uh, just to give you a, a couple for examples. You all know about the rise of, uh, of intermarriage. Um, in the 1950s, maybe uh, 10 or 15 percent of Jews who married were marrying non-Jews. By the early 70s, it was, uh, it was 22 and a half percent. It was according to my study. By the 1980s, it had reached uh, around 40 percent. In 1990, around 43 percent. And in the year 2000, uh, 47 percent. So basically. In my own in my own lifetime, I've watched a situation from which from which uh, almost all Jews marry Jews to right now to where half half the Jews who are marrying are marrying non-Jews who don't convert to Judaism. There's, there's even more who marry non-Jews who convert to Judaism. I don't count them. In the marriages, from a demographic point of view, those marriages are pure gain. Uh, the, the, the issue is when you when two born Jews marry each other, you, you use up two Jews. But when, the, when, you, when one Jew marries a non-Jew, you only use up one Jew. So, uh, you know, they, they, so then you, you, know, you, can, you can get something out of that, and uh, you, you use one Jew, and you get two kids. That's, uh, you know, what, what's, what, what's the fact? Yeah. Of the non-Jew marrying, how many converted, how many don't? About, it uh, looks, like, looks like around 15% of the non-Jews convert, almost all the women. Basically, there are four people who can convert. 
the Jew, the non-Jew, the men, the women, right? There's four, four total families. Uh, of all the, all the conversion action going on, it's about, the, of all that whole cell, it's about two thirds women of the, of the, uh, in the conversion class that's coming this way, in our direction, uh, it's about four women to every man. Uh, you would think that if you're a Gentile looking to find a wife, it might be a good idea to go to a conversion class. <laughs> but the problem is that most of those women sitting in that class are converting because they've already gotten engaged or married a Jewish man. So it's not, it's not a great place to hang out if you're looking for, you know, uh, so, um, but, so we're familiar with the rise of, uh, of, of intermarriage. It has, um, uh, it has huge consequences for the demography of, a, of, a, of American Jews. Um, only about 25% of the children of the mixed married grow up and say that I'm Jewish. And we now know that those children who have one Jewish parent uh, tend to have extraordinarily weak Jewish background. I'll give you one little statistic that's come out of Boston. Among, let's just say, among reformed Jewish kids who are, have two Jewish parents, 15% of them, by, by late adolescence, have gone to Israel. Among their one Jewish parent counterparts, uh, only 1% have gone to Israel. This is a, like, just to give you a, 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 few, a few examples. So not only do we have fewer Jews coming out of marriages, but they're also, they, 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 they tend to be of weaker, uh, uh, weaker Jewish background, and they have higher rates of intermarriage in the next, uh, in the next generation. And I am, um, no, not 95%. It depends if they're raised Jewish or not Jewish. If they're raised not Jewish, 95%. If they're raised Jewish, 55%. So, one thing we want to do is to try to convince the parents who are, who, who are intermarried to try to reach them to convince them it's a good thing, from our point of view, that they should raise the kids as Jews. It makes, it, makes a, it makes a difference. If a Jew marries a Jew, those children have about a 30% chance of, uh, of intermarriage. And that number is probably going down because we're getting, we're getting a, 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 the mechanical selection. As the Jews who are committed to being Jewish you know, in marry and stay in, and stay in marriage, as also as the organized population increases, the in Jews are more committed to being Jewish than they were way back when. When my parents uh, and that generation in, in, in married, it was like, wasn't, like, who was you going to marry? But they were Jews, right? Today, an act of in-marriage is a firm of, firm of act of Judaism, that, that, and, and therefore, the in today are more special than they were back, back then, and, and, the, and we can see over time the commitment of the in actually increases because basically what's also, what's also happening is that the intermarried are leading the population, and we're moving into a world of what I call a, a, a world of two juries. Let me just kind of round this out. But the issue of that is not only uh, intermarriage, which changes the way Jews think about non Jews, the way non Jews think about Jews. It's a reflection of the anti antisemitism. Um, um, but also, there's a big shift in, uh, in friendship patterns. Um, in my generation, a little older than my generation, uh, over two thirds of American Jews have mostly Jewish friends. In my, uh, my children's generation, I don't happen to be living in Israel, so it's not for her, but uh, kids are age, uh, in the 20s. Uh, about two thirds of her, their friends are not Jewish. So within one generation, there's been a shift from mostly Jewish to mostly non Jewish friends. Along with that, uh, uh, the, the spreading out of the population, it's really hard to find Jewish neighborhoods uh, anymore. Uh, there are some, but many fewer than there used to be. Um, and therefore, the, the social networks that tie Jews to one another uh, diminish. And therefore, the um, images that Jews have of Jews and of non-Jews and of the, the ability to perpetuate certain basic assumptions about what it means to be Jew um, uh, to a lot of extent uh, dissipate. So that's, that's kind of track number one. Track number two is, as I indicated, the increasing um, individualism uh, in the book that Ani I wrote, we spoke about the rise of the Jewish sovereign self. And there's, there have been two shifts that I want to talk about. I'm going to really kind of summarize it, but it's all about increasing individualism, increasing the ability for Jews to take, to take control of themselves, with both negative and some very, very positive uh, outcomes as, as, as a result. My generation, maybe one generation, I'm born in 1950, how, how is my generation different from my parents' generation? As I said, 
We are the generation.